The first thing I recommend anyone does when you're starting GarageBand is grab your GarageBand, open the first project, hit the settings button, come down to your advanced settings and turn on 24-bit resolution. So let's show you how we can add it here in GarageBand if you don't already have it on there. So what you need to do is go to the top here under your settings and then scroll on down to advanced settings. And there's actually some cool stuff in here. I would just recommend putting most of these on. Except, I mean, send MIDI clock you can put on as well. It doesn't usually hurt. But these are some advanced options and a lot of them are off by default. So the one that I want you to pay special attention to is this one, 24-bit audio resolution. Now, this is essential if you're using an audio interface or a mixer that is 24-bit. Otherwise, what GarageBand is doing is it's downscaling your 24-bit audio, your pristine quality audio to 16-bit. Now, 16-bit's still fine. That's CD quality sound, yeah? 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, CD quality. But we've got better than CD quality now. In the home recording world, we can have 24-bit resolution. But because we used to not have it, it's not on by default. So I also recommend putting multi-track recording on. That will help you if you are recording multiple tracks, especially if you're using an audio interface. Running background modes handy as well. That just means that when I'm playing a track here and I want to switch apps, it'll keep playing and I can jump around between apps. So that's kind of handy. Uh, and the other things that we have in here in our advanced settings is you've got your use with music apps. Again, you probably won't need it. And if you don't need it, it's not a big deal. And then we've got our send MIDI clock. So it's probably a good idea to just jump into your advanced settings, turn them all on. If it causes problems and you're having issues, sure, you can turn them off. But the 24-bit audio, even if you're not using any 24-bit audio samples, it can't hurt because one day you might. One day you might bring in a loop that's 24-bit and the last thing you want is for Apple to grab it and downscale it to 16-bit. You're just going to reduce the quality of your sound. And if you want an explanation all about 16-bit and 24-bit and what the difference is, I do have a video about that, which I will uh, link down in the description.